it's almost hard to believe that it's the end of January already. It's been an incredibly busy month. I've been out there fishing loads of matches. I've been doing loads and loads of filming for you that I'm going to be rolling out going through February. But it's no secret that there are over 400 videos on this channel and as you can imagine underneath every single one of those videos there are lots and lots of comments. Some great comments, some slightly not so great comments, but there are lots of questions, lots and lots of questions that people have been asking just about, you know, about my fishing, about their fishing and about lots of the videos that I produce and so as you can imagine it's impossible for me to go through every single comment underneath every video. So because of that I've been asked to bring back 4 Minute Friday. As the name suggests that just gives me a few minutes each Friday to go through some of those comments, some of those questions where hopefully I'm going to be able to help some of you out with some of your fishing related questions. That's a great question and it's partly just because lots of the competitions that I fish, certainly the feeder orientated competitions, you're not allowed to throw ground bait in. But there are lots and lots of venues where you are able to do that but it's just not a technique that comes into play in lots of the session videos that I upload to this channel. However, going through February and going through the remainder of this year, I will be uploading lots of videos from different venues. It's also going to incorporate lots of different tactics, lots of different methods and throwing ground bait in short range and long range is going to come into it. So you will be seeing me do that later on this year. That's a brilliant question and that's because it's very relevant to this time of year as well. When we're fishing silverfish matches, sometimes, certainly if the weather's mild, you can get plagued with carp. Obviously this applies more to commercial fisheries and one of the best things I can say to you is just try and think about the baits that the carp are going to want to eat. Now sometimes, you know, carp do favour certain baits like pellets for example. Yes, you can catch silverfish on pellets and the, certainly expanded pellets can be brilliant for skimmers, for, for bream. But obviously, as you know, carp love pellets as well. So you might want to just stay away from baits like that. That might help you out. Just stick to more maggots, pinkies, that sort of thing. Sometimes chop worm can work in winter as well, where you might not be plagued as much with carp. But unfortunately, sometimes location is the issue as well with carp. If they ball up, you might be in a corner or something like that. It could be inevitable that you're going to be hooking carp. So the first option for me would always to take a look at the actual baits that you're using. Um, great question, but again, it's because lots of the session videos that I produce are really based around a particular method. You know, there are lots of things I could do in lots of videos. You know, I could switch to a float, a waggler, a pole. There's lots of things I could do. It's just when I upload a session video, I try to keep the theme quite simple because it appeals to lots of newcomers to the sport as well and to those anglers that haven't got a wide variety of fishing tackle so if it you know it just goes down the route of using one rod then it obviously appeals to more people and it just shows that you can catch fish by just keeping a really nice simple approach but having said that i have got loads of videos coming out where i will be pole fishing and float fishing this year I've been asked about this a few times. Now, there are really three different ways of doing your dead red maggots, okay? Now, the first one is quite simply to pour hot water over them to kill them. Now, I advise against that purely because if the water's too hot and if it's straight out of the kettle, for example, yes, it'll kill the maggots, but it will take out a lot of the color. They will almost go white, and that's just basically because you're scalding them, so they won't be nice and red. So, I, I wouldn't recommend doing that. One way around it like that is to put your maggots into a tub of cold water and then add water straight out of the kettle as soon as it's boiled straight into that water but add it slowly so that you can just gradually get it to a temperature where it's going to kill the maggots but you've got more control over it so you're not actually going to be scalding them because you can stop adding the water as soon as they're dead before they start losing the colour and the two other ways that you can actually get your dead red maggots one of them is probably the most common way that I always used to do it and I have done it over the years is to simply get your maggots put them in a bag, squeeze the air out of the bag, and just put them, obviously tie the bag, and then put them in the freezer. And that is it, you know, and in, in, you know, in a few hours they will be dead. And they keep the color quite well doing it that way. That is by far the easiest way. But the way that I've been doing it more often than not, and it's the way that I will be doing it more going through the year, certainly when I'm fishing on festivals, um, and I'll really explain to you why I do this. And that is basically because when I buy my maggots from the tattle shop, 
they come in a bag and what I basically do is leave them in that bag okay so when you get your maggots if you intend on using them dormant or dead just get your bag squeeze all the air out of the bag tie a knot in the bag all right and then just put those maggots in the fridge and that is it I leave them like that and what will gradually happen over the course of the next hour or two the maggots will slow down they'll gradually go really really dormant and in the course of you know over the space of probably two hours they will look dead all right, but they will still be alive. You're just kind of cutting their air off to them and so they go dormant. What you'll do then is when you take those to the bank side, as soon as you get to the bank side, you can undo the bag. When the air gets to the maggots, they will gradually in time come round and just come back to life. As long as they haven't been kept bang, bagged up for too long, don't keep them bagged up for days and days and days because they'll take forever to come round. So once the air gets to them, they will start to come round. So as soon as I get to, the, to my peg, if I want those maggots live, all I can do is just put them in a bait tub and over the course of an hour or two, depending on how long they've been bagged up, the air will get to the maggots, they will gradually come round and you can use the maggots live. However, if you didn't want to use them live and you want to use them dormant or just like a dead maggot, as soon as you take them out of the bag, they will be dormant, pop them in a bait tub and then cover them with water. All right, and that'll do two things. First thing it'll do is cut off the air supply to the maggots so they will stay dormant. But what it will also do as well, because they're in water, it'll keep them nice and soft. And because you've done it that way, they will retain that lovely red colour. So I've slightly overran, but hopefully those questions are going to be of interest to the people that have asked them and to some of you out there. I will be uploading a 4 Minute Friday every single Friday now going through February and onwards if you want to continue seeing them. So if you want to get some questions in for next week's video then please post your comments underneath this one and i'll use this as a reference for next week's video so thanks for watching and if you don't want to miss out on any of the uploads this year don't forget to hit subscribe and i look forward to seeing you in the next upload